Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to be revisiting one of my older projects, which is a reinforcement learning stock trading agent. Um, I've made a couple of improvements to the code and I think we'll be able to, uh, well, I think we're just moving in the right direction. So if you haven't seen any of these videos before, I will leave some links to the previous videos. I highly recommend watching those if you're unfamiliar with them because I go through the code in a lot more detail in this video. I don't want it to get too long, so I'm just going to go over some of the things that I really want to highlight. So one of the key elements that I think that I've been struggling with is getting enough data for my agent to practice trading on. And we're going to solve that using Alpaca, which is this here. They offer an API for historical data on cryptocurrency as well as stocks. And you can get it by the minute. So that's what I did. I've stored my API keys in in my Google Drive, and we're just going to go in and read those lines. Now, it's strange about the API key. It's not that strange because I saved it in a text document, and the second line is the secret key. So if you call this API key, it comes with this new line sort of denomination here. Um, and since that's included in the string, we just want to drop that. So we're saying the API key is the first line in the list of lines that we've read here. And we want to drop uh, just the last character, which is this here. All right, so then we have our API key, and then we have our secret key. Uh, that's all good. We'll need that. We're going to use Alpaca. We'll just install Alpaca PY. And um, I think this is going to be really helpful. We'll need stock historical data client, stock bar request, time frame, and date time. We initialize the stock historical data client by with our API keys and secret keys. And then we just request the parameters. So we pass through symbol or symbols. We're going to use Apple time frame. We'll be doing minutes. And this level of granularity one minute time frames, and we can do it all the way back from 2022. Uh, that's a year. I'm filming this in May, mid-May. So, um, yeah. So, so we're gonna do it from this time last year. We're gonna get every minute uh, for every trading day between that time. And you'll see. Once we get the bar, and then the way we get the bars is using client, get stock bars, request params, right? Once we get all that data, we put it into a data frame. Um, the reason we have a drop level here is because the index level is two indexes. So because we can pass through many symbols, we can actually pull like Apple, Microsoft, et cetera, et cetera. And so the index to denote which symbol we're at is in a column. It's part of the index. So we drop that in the index. And we're just left with the date time and the open, high, low, close volume. Alpaca also provides trade count, which is pretty cool. And it also provides VWAP for us um, initially. And you can see here, uh, we, yeah, it starts at eight. eight 801, 802, 803. So that's this is the head of the data frame here. It's pretty cool. We get an extra column. We do not get adjusted close, which is too bad, but we do get the VWAP and a trade count, um, which just makes it so we don't have uh, very many, or we, but we do get trade count and VWAP. So, you know, that'll save us a step down the road. And you can see here we have 208,570 um, entries here in our index. So that's that's awesome. The most I've been able to get before in the past is like 15,000 rows. So we're getting a significant 
amount of data here that I haven't really been able to figure out. So this is just an environment thing. Um, it is in the correct order. It's going from you know our farthest day back and it goes up to the most recent day. So we don't need to reconfigure the you know the the sort of the index here by day. Um, it's already correct, and then we just got to make sure that everything's capitalized. And I'm going to also include several other features in the data. So I'm going to include a return. We calculate the return by taking the log of the close divided by the close shifted by one, right? And then we'll include RSA, RSI, simple moving short, simple moving long, OBV, EMA, ATR. Um, I don't know what indicators to include. I just throw in like a bunch of different ones um, and just let the agent figure it out. I also included momentum, volatility, and distance. Um, and, you know, we just calculate those using the rolling average by five and the volatility is the rolling 20 standard deviation. And the distance we're just defining as the close minus the close rolling average. And then we take that and shift it by one. So, ba -ba -ba, excellent. The other thing I'm putting in there is uh, a simple linear regression market direction prediction column. So if you've seen another video about forecasting or um, you know, linear regression on market direction, you know that we need to use a certain number of lags to predict what the next sixth day is going to be, for example. So we're going to create columns for each lag, and then we're going to calculate the prediction using linear al algebra, least squared um, regression on that. So by the end of all this, you can see here we have our features that we got from Alpaca. But if we scroll on over, you can see that we have, excuse me, if we scroll on over, we get the return, RSI, SMA. These are just all the other columns. And then we get ATR, momentum, volatility, and you see lags one through five, and then the prediction column, all right? So pretty, pretty handy. This is going to be our data frame. Um, we got to basically what this function does is sets a custom environment by making sure that our prices are the close column. And then we'll also be using our signal features as all the other columns included in the, in the, uh, in the data frame. Now, I'm actually going to remove this close here because I don't think we need it in our signal features since it's included with our prices. But um, now we just change in the class of custom environments uh, the signals to process data, right? And then we're going to set our window size as 65. That just means how many rows the agent can see at any given time during its state. And then our start window, our start index is going to be 65. Our end train index is going to be an 80-20 split. So we're splitting the data from um, to include 80% of the length of the data. We're going to round that just so it's a whole number. And then everything else is going to be the, the length of our data, right? Everything onward. So. Hopefully that makes sense, but basically what we're saying is it's going to be, since we have a frame bound, we're setting where the index starts and where it ends. And since we're training the agent at this point, we're going to start at 65 as the window size, which is also the first 65 rows that we see in our start index. And it's going to continue through the the data until it reaches our end train index. And then when we test it and are out of sample, it's going to start with our end train index here. And it's going to end with our end value index, which is just the like last, um, you know, 208,000 or whatever it was 
it'll make more sense when we get down to that point. But um, just just know that we're training and validating it in the out of sample here. I'm gonna make a vector of it. This line here is really important. So I was doing some additional research on stable baselines and I came across this little note saying that we could stabilize our training with this line here um, by setting the optimizer class to, to this here. So um, stable baselines built out a, a class for that. So we imported it and we're going to set our policy quarks to this here. I don't really know what it does. I'm really just trusting the good people at stable baselines and the GitHub community. And we're just gonna set our policy quarks in our model to, to this here. Um, when I was training it initially, it, it seemed to work. It, it seemed to be training much more efficiently than before. Um, and the last time I did it, I only did it on 100,000 time steps. This time I'm gonna double it to 200,000 time steps to see um, if we can get any better results than my test run. So bear with me while we wait for this to train. Excellent. So we are done. We're on the final stage here. We just need to reset our custom environment. Now we're going to train on the rest of our data, starting from the end of our training index to the end of our total data frame. Hopefully that makes more sense now that you understand frame bound. The window size stays the same. It's going to be 65. And let's go ahead and run the code to see what we get. It'll print out a graph of the different trades, as well as our reward and our total um, total profit. It does take a little bit, I've noticed, on the minute by minute time frame. So just bear with me here. All right, it didn't make any selling trades for some reason. But you can see here the total profit is 0 0.4. I got a couple of questions on what exactly does that mean? So think of it this way. If you, it's, it's sort of like a percentage. So if this is one, you're making a profit. If it's less than one, you've lost money. So in this instance, we've lost money, but by how much? So I think I've thought a little bit more about how to explain this better. And if you have your initial starting point is one, and if you make more than one, you've made money. If you make less than one, you've lost money. So the one is a break even point. So if you made, let's say a total profit of 1.4, it would mean that you have 40% additional profit from where you started. In this training environment, you've lost 40% of your initial investment, basically, or 50%. Um, so all in all, it's not like we've improved the model in terms of finding an agent that actually will perform well, um, even on a training and validation set. I think maybe we can even go back farther. I think there's also some other code or even maybe some other uh, reinforcement learning packages that I could look into. I know Finn RL is a popular trading reinforcement learning package. So I'm gonna try to look into those. Elegant RL is another um, stable baselines type reinforcement learning package. Um, so I don't know the next time I'll be making one of these videos about reinforcement learning and trading. It might be soon, might be a while, but hopefully you found it more interesting. Uh, definitely recommend using Alpaca 
it's fairly simple. The SDK and the APIs are kind of confusing, but um, but it seems to provide pretty good data, and I don't know the limits of it yet. So um, stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing or watching another video. I really appreciate it. Bye.